Okay, hi there, guys. If anyone's there, just let me know if you can hear me clear. Otherwise, I'm going to have to um, quickly make a change. All right. Uh, let me just go find something else. There we are. Pretty sure I'm good to go. All right. Hey, Mark, how are you guys? I hope you're doing well. That's an interesting market at this at this stage. Uh, I think there's a, there's a massive difference between fundamentals and uh, <laughs> and what's actually happening in shares. So, but either way, there's no complaints. We just keep chugging away and keep buying. You know, it's pretty much coming in the morning, especially with the indices. I don't know if anyone watches the indices outside of ours, as in outside the US hours, which is pretty much once it opens about 9, 9.30, it starts to kick off. Pretty much you can walk in the last few days and just buy, close your eyes and, and sell again later on. Um, sell again later on in the, the afternoon gets ramped up and, and it's happened again today they got ramps um the hang seng just took off um we had a few markets just spike and it happened on friday happened on thursday wednesday so it's um you know the employment data the un u.s unemployment rate tripled you know that's that's massive but what well, the fact that it's not 16 it's 14.4 percent is uh, a bonus it's kind of weird so there's a big divide between the fundamentals and um, the technicals, or well, not the technicals so much. Sorry, that the share market, the share market's going up when they should suggest that you know you're losing jobs, you go down. And I'm not, I'm not a big believer that we're all everything's factored in. You know, I, I still believe that we're taken in stages, and this is a bit of a it could be a massive trap, and that's what I'm watching for. And that's why, I mean, if you know the tone, if anyone's been following me for a while, I've got a bit of a bearish tone. Still buying. I mean, it's not going to stop me from trading what I see. And I think that's the most important thing. If we can get across that today, trade what you see. You may need to take a few adjustments to your strategy, which I'll explain in a minute. Why? So basically, our alert service has been, the majority is based around the ASX shares, and we've been branching out lately because I think some, some very good opportunities into indices. We've done very well on indices at the start when the market was crashing, um, done well on gold, had a couple of small losses on gold, but nowhere near what we've made it um, on that run-up. Um, what else? So we've been a few currencies. So there's enough opportunity around, and it's trading off the same sort of price action that we like, like to look for, the same structure or the same signals, all that sort of stuff. So um, we'll go through a bit about how we've adjusted especially on the share side, because nothing's really adjusted the way we're looking at things, the way I look at things for indices and such. I mean, apart from just buying and forgetting about selling, <laughs> that's pretty much it at the moment. It's getting ramped. It's, I don't know if anyone watches it, if anyone believes in that sort of stuff, but it's, it's definitely getting ramped up because uh, you know, you've got the Dow futures, which is the YM, the futures out of ours, which is all the CFDs based on everything. They're very thin. And it's a lot easier to ramp it out of ours and get it you know, moving 200 points on the upside than when it is um, during the, the normal session after what, 10, 11.30 at night. So, yeah, they're out, they're out and they're playing games, but if you can notice the games, there's opportunity too. So we'll keep an eye on that. So anyway, what I didn't say before is welcome, everyone. Uh, we had a couple of people um, coming through TradingView. Welcome, guys. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, everyone that um, usually joins us on uh, our YouTube channel as well. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Uh, like just before we, we get underway, if you do like what you see, it would be much appreciated if we can um, give us a like, drop us a like, or spread the word. It'll all be awesome. Um, help us build the community up of like-minded traders. Uh, you know, you know, the positive that will be when we build it up is just to get more opportunities. People will you know come up with more things that someone else has missed or myself has missed them, and I can't cover everything. Um, and I'm just trading the markets that I'm more used to. But if anyone pops up with some other opportunities that make sense, then yeah. Um, that's that's always going to be a bonus. So I'll get rid of I'm going to do a couple of things. Let me just one second. I've got to change transition. Let me get rid of that. Get rid of the old bull. And 
what I want to do today is just go through, um, you know, some basic setups of what we look for and, and how we've changed. So really, like I was saying, if, um, if anyone's been watching this and, and mainly the, the alerts coming through, you'll see that we've changed. And we spoke about this probably last week, the week before, you know, the last few weeks is just having to alter, alter the way we trade. Um, you know, because I don't, if I go back down to, let's just get at this one. So this is an alert um, I've just sent out previously. It just missed that buy entry at 57. I mean, that's a longer term. It's based off the day. But if you're trading this off the intraday, you'd want to be trading it sort of through 53, 53 and a half. Um, but generally, uh, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to stick to intraday here. Generally, you can see this is what I'll be looking at most days. Okay, and previously you'd be looking at the daily charts, you're looking at maybe the weekly, you know, and that what that's doing is giving yourself a bigger time frame. You can you know where your risk is, all that sort of stuff. But you can't do that sort of thing. And I can't do that sort of thing right now because the markets that you know they've been hammered. So you're getting that sort of structure on a daily chart. You shouldn't be buying that. All right. There's not much traditionally what I would be looking at to say buy that, all right? But if you start dropping it down and you realise that, I mean, there's a few factors what we just mentioned, the market's just going nuts. Okay, I'll just draw that up. The market's bullish. You know, so what we would normally do is just uh, set up the trade. So this one could be just, just say this is what we're looking at. All right, 150 resistance, you can tag it a few times through here. It just couldn't get through. Okay, and you can see that the momentum, if you're looking through here, is starting to head south. Okay, it's trading, sellers keep stepping in. If every time it ramps up, you know, selling pressure ramps up, like we said, you know, you get to that overbought, that's just selling pressure essentially, um, ramps up and you're not getting through, that's a heads up that probably won't get through in the near term, might have to take a deeper correction. So what you're looking for is so the market's pop, popping up. And if it can't get through, so this is the anchor, if I can't get a few, through a few times, more than likely it's going to push through the anchor, clean out a few people on this, you know, this could be a longer term trend up, clean out a few people from that trend, I'm going to push through the anchor and then reset and then go again. And if it can't go for the third time, that's what we talked the difference between what I would term a head and shoulders if it fails here. Not, not here. I wouldn't say that's a head and shoulders. Sorry, not head and shoulders. Double top, double top, because it hasn't broken the anchor. As soon as it breaks the anchor and goes again and it can't, and say it fails up here, um, let me just draw that. If it fails up here, again, after breaking that anchor, that's a much more bearish signal, okay? So I've got sidetracked here. <laughs> but that's, you know, when you can't get up, get up, get up, get up, it's going to have to take a deeper correction. And that's what um, we've seen here, except it just kept going down, all right? So that's has been the price action. Let me just go back. All right, so traditionally... Well, traditionally, what I'd be looking for is a time when it starts to break up. So we know that's your contraction. We've got a, a zone, say, at 30 cents. It's tagged it here. I come all the way back down and that sell-off in um, March and, and tagged it again and bounced back up. Okay, then we started getting support through, was it 45, 46, 47? And we're just starting to lift now. So traditionally, what I would do is potentially, I mean, it could be a break of that because you want to take it through the high low off a high low through the most recent lower high, if that makes sense. And the lower high is here. Um, I'll take a step back. Lower high just in here. The most recent, so you've got lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, all that. That's the most recent one. And you want to take it, for my traditional entry, would be off a higher low. You're on the daily chart. And then you're looking sort of up to these reasons. Then you're going to start marking up where your risk would be. Okay, we've got potentially up at 90. Okay, we got we can see that's roughly... It's just over one to one, 1 1.2, whatever it is to one, risk reward. Okay, so any normal day, I would say normal, where it's not a bearish market, if it's a bullish market and the ASX is heading that way, this is what we're looking for. This is the kind of setup, and this is going to be our bread and butter in a way. And we're looking for, you know, you had a big move up here, a big flush out. All this move down has washed out all this leg. They're rebuilding. It's starting again. We're getting it when the outcome is unknown because you don't know if it's just going to pop up. You don't know if it's going to trend back up to new highs through 150 or what's going to happen, but it's unknown after flushing out. So if we get in, you know, say the markets rally the way up here, we're doing this sort of thing, and we start to look at buying up here, that's not the unknown, that's the known, okay? And we're getting in late. We're getting with the herd, 
that makes sense. So once the herd finishes buying, which essentially is a, a low probability trade, and it's when the outcome is known, there's not many people on the sidelines willing to jump in again to push it higher for you. So that's why we're aiming always to get that's your contraction lower, come off a level. That's a you know good strong sign. Reacted off that level, held a higher level. So buyers stepping in here, that's that's good price action. That's proof that okay this is going to hold. Buyers are willing to buy it off that level, and we're jumping in as early as we can. Um, through the most recent low, lower high, like I said here. So basically, we buy through there, your risk is below, and away you go. That's your traditional, you know, that's why I would be attacking the markets and we have in the past, you know, when the market was a bull market um, before the sell-off. But things have changed. So what we really have to take notice of is this price section. All right, so that on the, on the daily chart, it's looking good, but technically I wouldn't particularly buy that just yet. I mean, there's, there could be the, the fact that um, on the daily, so we buy it, it pushes up to 63 and we, we bought it, we sort of preempted that and it turns around and crashes down to 30 again. We don't know that. But if it's going to push through 63, there's a good chance it's going to continue at least, you know, back on the 90 and potentially go higher, especially if the market's bullish. You've got to remember the underlying tone of the market. And the underlying tone of this, well, it is bullish at this stage, but it's a massive, for me, overtone of bearishness. <laughs> That's making sense to you. Um, so, I mean, you can't keep in the US, just keep having massive, massive debts, big unemployment. Um, you know, there's still massive overvaluations of stocks there. I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen? But they're basically addicted to stimulus. The thought of unemployment that just skyrockets to them means stimulus, to, to the world means, okay, bonus, let's just keep buying. And that to me is, is sort of the theme at the moment. Until they come up with some sort of vaccine, so they come up with a vaccine, then that's fine. But the vaccine is not going to come around till supposedly end of the year, start of next year potentially. And they rush it through. I think there's all sort of hazards if they try to rush it through as well. So I guess they've got to stick to their game plan. So to me, that that's not what the market's focusing on. It's just focusing on okay, let's get out of lockdown. Uh, we'll keep buying until it gets out of lockdown. If there's more, which I would expect uh, another run or second wave in um, in virus whatever you call it, contagion or I forget the word now, then um, uh, infection. So then that's where I think the market's going to get hit because then all of a sudden you get a second wave and the market's already sort of on its knees. How many? How much more stimulus can they keep throwing at it? You know, you're just printing presses on. They're still going to fund that. Um, and then you look at Europe, you know, they get a second wave because they come out of lockdown. Australia's barely been hit. What if we get a big wave and it starts to put things under pressure again? I mean, the good thing is through the lockdown all this time, they've had enough time to sort of get their health system up and running better or more stable so it can take these numbers. And if they come out of lockdown slowly, they probably anticipate infections and hopefully you get that, what is it called, the bulk immunity um, theory. If more people are infected, they, they get through it, they're fine. Um, I think that's the idea. How are you going? Is it Jolid? How are you going, mate? So, yeah, that's... What I feel the market's looking for, and I, I do get concerned that once if those numbers do start to pick up, which, like I said, I do expect that, then I would I would think that the fundamentals are going to take control again. The market's overcooked on the upside um, because you just can't get valuations like they've got in the US at the moment and keep can't keep getting addicted to stimulus. So hence why I've taken a different approach. So if we go back to this example on PET, I like it because... I'm looking at the lower time frame chart. So that's my theory is that, okay, if these markets are going to keep popping up, there's a bit of euphoric buying around at the moment. People are just buying everything at the moment because it's cheap. It's, we're heading back to the moon. We're going to come out of this unscathed. We're going back to the highs, all that sort of theory. Um, if I drop this down, so if we bear that in mind with this daily setup, I'm just looking to take advantage of an earlier setup, earlier time frame. Um, and that's why... You know, getting through 57 rather than waiting for it to get through 60, getting a bit of a heads up on the run or a bit of a head start on that run up is what we want. And then you can also, by dropping it down a chart, whether it's an hourly or 30 minute, you can minimize your risk because if you're going to be right, that should just keep going. And we're going to risk down at, say, below 50, for example, or even below that, you can have it below 48, um, below these lows at 45, 46. So that's what I'd be looking for. It just means you can tighten things up knowing that the, the market's in a buying mood as well and it's sort of the more bad numbers that come out, it gets brushed aside and the US just keep buying. 
it's simple. So they just keep pushing things higher, pushing things higher. Um, what is the best day for trading? Basically every day, in my opinion. Uh, there's always something happening. Always something happening for intraday trading. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's why I'm attacking. So there's some other examples. We've got an APT, APE, which is here. Now this, we had this little run up. We took advantage of this run up, and you can see same sort of structure. So what we're just talking about on this daily, this structure here, off a high low, you know, it's retested these bottoms, and you've got your high low. Once it starts to break out of that contraction lower, because don't forget the market goes from expansion to contraction to expansion to contraction. That's just basically what the market's doing. Um, you're looking for when it's contracting lower, it pops up. Okay, we don't know if this is going to be any different to this move pop up, take out the lows, it pops up, gets held up above the lows okay at a higher level that's a good sign whereas here it didn't get held up just kept going south through these lows so that's not a good sign at all so if you bought this thinking it was going to keep going and you turn around you've got to have your stop somewhere if you're a trader you've got to have your stop somewhere you've got to know where your risk is and here we know exactly where our risk is we've got the heads up we've gone from contraction early stages that we are potentially going to expansion and we want to look in the expanding market so we're not wasting our time um, holding on to something i mean if we bought that for example, if you've got a different mentality in the way of invest, or I don't want to say investing, but you're not really knowing exactly where your risk is because you're in a bullish market. What if you bought it just before you know, the start of the year and then you're seeing something that's halved in price, but you're committed to it in a way? I would rather buy, um, not waste my money, buy, I mean, if you bought it here, it's turned out okay. You know, you got back out of here. Okay, that's great, but that's not trading. That sort of get out of jail free card is not going to happen all the time. And it's going to be that one or two times that it happens that you got used to doing this, just holding. It's going to turn around and crucify you. And it doesn't take much. Um, if you've got a portfolio you're built like that and all of a sudden they all get hit and you just go, it'll be fine, it'll come back. I mean, I'm going to say many times, if you did that just into the GFC because you had five years bull market, um, we've only just got back through the highs recently. You know, it took us five, I said, eight, eight years, nine years to get back through those highs, around those highs at least. So who wants to hold something for eight years? It's a waste of time. So yeah, that's what I'd be looking for. By the time you're buying, you're coming out of, you're going contraction here, you're looking to come out of expansion. We're down to that 30 minute chart. We're not looking at the daily here because we're looking at the same price action. We just want something short, sharp, quicker trade. Okay, we don't want to be sitting here looking at the daily chart, get up, but we buy it, it jumps, um, and then we sit holding it you know, when the market starts to melt down. So if I'm right on the overall market, they're probably overextended, overcooked, it's got to be a pullback in the US, all that sort of thing. Then I would expect if it does kick off, it's going to kick off hard and you can forget about the price action after a while because there's going to be times when, yeah, it all looks good, technicals are great, everything's lining up and then boom, it becomes completely emotional and the market just sells off, forgets about any technical levels, just boom, like we did previously. So that's why I'm happy to go down to the, drop it down to the 30 minute time frame and trade exactly the time, same price action. So if we looked at this on a daily, we're looking at this. So at that stage, we're looking at, drill it right in, this price action, we're looking at a big push up, pull back, we're looking for this inside level to hold and buy on a higher low, which was basically about here, I think the day before the big run. And then, um, yeah, that, that was it. So we, we got our price action for the daily even though I wouldn't buy this off a daily because the momentum's down still, the MAs are still down, everything's pointing down at that stage. We know that it's been sold off hard and this is what we're talking about. This is an important thing, that big flush lower. So when you've got the big flush lower, it's taken out a lot of people. I mean, at that stage, you still had this low in place at, at six bucks when you're trading around nine. Okay, so if you bought it here, you've got half of this move up, say six, or six bucks up to nine. Anyone that bought it below nine is in profit. When you got this flush, all of them are behind the ball. So if you're holding, anyone on this leg up here is behind the eight ball. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. It's important to know this is a big flush. Like this this move down is either clean people up or they're forgetting about it. And they're just, like I said, putting their bottom draw, forget about it, and just wait a year or two, see if it can come back. All right. So that's an important part on the daily chart as to why you would be buying off a higher low as opposed to you know, traditionally we'd be looking for this. It gets above the MAs, your first pullback to the MAs, it sticks, holds the MAs, and you look to buy in that rise again. So you're buying into that expansion. The fact that we've had a massive flush down, you can sort of not worry too much about the MAs, but you've got to, in my book, I'm still looking for that quick trade because of the overall 
global markets. I just don't believe that they should just keep hiding higher. If they do, I'm fine with that also. Right? So this is an example. We took the, the run up there. I think we took a partial somewhere. Closed out, I don't know, it would have been somewhere up near five. Someone else might know the, the figures better. And then, you know, we're out here. And then it started to rise again. So I think we bought it, it was on this day. So it was in this little move up here, again, through 456. A couple of, you know, the next day, it helped push back down, tested towards the stop level, didn't get stopped out. The stop was down at 420 or so at that stage. And then we started to get so lift again. So again, it's back above the MAs. This day here held the MAs, then spiked up on Friday. And we again today, it's just powering along. So that's what I'm saying. We're not taking big risk here. So from that entry to the risk, we've already got four to one, three or three or four to one, probably about now um, on that trade. But you can see that if it does, if the market capitulates not in the US, it doesn't matter because we're, we've taken a good chunk out of that. And we've taken a chunk out previously. All right. So it just means that, yeah, okay, you might turn over a bit, but as a strategy to minimize your risk or your exposure, um, that's the reasoning behind sort of moving down some charts. All right, just moving down from a, a traditional weekly, daily time frame. So I might look at the weekly, daily, and look at it the setup off the daily. I don't really drop down to intraday. Now I've been using intraday a hell of a lot. Okay, and that's basically all the chart, you know, the trades we've got at the moment. Um, AMA is off the intraday and it's up from the entry at 45. It's chopping around there, but that still looks good if we go back to the daily there. Same sort of structure, big retracement. We pull back, we hold this high low. We're expecting that to go through 50 simple and push up now if it doesn't again we're not taking a big hit on it it's not a big risk trade all right so that's um what we've been looking at on your shares and the reasoning behind it um we got any questions anyone want to ask a question just on that while we go or do you want to start looking at some charts is there anything else i was going to look at say the dow i mean if you looked at it last week it hasn't changed it's gone higher let's have a look just to see where they are i mean i'm looking for that all right, so this is the daily chart. It's it's really hard because everyone's saying, all oh, right, we could be getting a head and shoulders here. I mean, there's no such thing as head and shoulders until it starts holding that lower high. All right, so if you're selling it because you're anticipating, again, that's not trading, that's anticipating. That's just trying to pick the top. And if you pick, if you're a top picker or a bottom picker, You've done it before, and, you, and I don't think that's a winning strategy at all. I don't think that's going to create consistency. All right, so little, what are you doing, mate? A little fly or something flying around the head. Okay, so that's the Dow. I don't, I don't see, you know, sorry, the S&P. There is nothing just yet to say it's heading south. It is overextended, all those sorts of things. Um, but, you know, it was overextended. Up here, had a pullback. Sellers start to come in. You can see by the selling pressure, but it still took out the high, went up again. Pullback, there's no reason why this just can't, um, you know, we take out the high and we just do the same thing. Deep correction, maybe chop around here and then go again. There's no reason at all. Okay, so if we're anticipating, we could just get ourselves chewed up and you don't want that, especially if you've had a few, you know, you've been buying up here, you've done well, you book some gains, and then you start giving it back to the market because you're not looking at the price action. If we get the market from here, it doesn't get through that high, and that's what I'll be watching. That's a high there. If we don't get through that high, and we start to roll over through here, that's what I think is going to be some more bearish action. We take out that low, and then even if we take out that, you know I mean, even if we don't finish below there, it sort of spikes down and pops back up. I'll be looking for that lower high, all right? Something like this, you know, some sort of price action where the market's popped up and it just starts to head over. You've got a lower high here after we took out this anchor. I mean, that was a lot harder move, so it's pretty obvious by the end of it. But you want to be selling off a lower high because the lower high, again, it's just the reverse of what we spoke about on um, on this high low, the reverse. Sellers are starting to step in earlier, okay? They're not waiting for it to get up to high. So if you were long through here and all of a sudden you see the market starting to form cracks, break down, then you want to be going off a lower high. Yeah, now that's that's true, Pete. It is, and that's the beauty of having the alert service. That's pretty much what I'm doing, sitting in front of the screen all day. But it is a better way to attack it if you're trading still off the daily. What the daily does, to get something up your sleeve, you know, to say to get one-to-one, -one, you've got to go, your target's got to be a bit bigger. 
Um, so essentially, if you can halve your risk on it, or a third of what your normal risk is, say your risk is, I don't know, a dollar on whatever trade, it's a dollar. On the daily charts, if you go off a 30-minute chart, you can essentially, it might be 50 cents or 30 cents. Then you go, okay, I can bump up. I can bump up my risk of what I'm, my exposure to that because of my risk exposure is the same. So I might risk a grand at a dollar. All of a sudden, if my stop is only 30 cents away, it's only 300 bucks. So if I make that a grand again, it's only 30 cents. I don't have to get the same profit target. That makes sense. Um, so it's just pretty clear. That's your, that's your entry level. If that's your typical stop off a daily, instead you've moved your stop up to get one-to-one -one on this one. You know, you're looking up here to get one to one on off a 30 minute chart. It's just that, you know, that's the kind of scenario. So if you do, it just means that you can start locking away and it's, it's nibbling more, I guess it's, um, it's more of sort of an intraday mentality, but I don't want any, a lot of overnight exposure. So for me to get to trade off the daily charts, for instance, and you're trying to get your one to one trade that may take the good part of a week or two weeks. Now, anything can happen in a week or two weeks, um, with this market. And if it's going to happen on the downside, it's going to take a day or session. All right. So what that means is we got less exposure in the overnight to the US to potential pullback. Um, all those sorts of figures just by dropping it down a time frame and still trying to get those gains, add to the, you know, I guess add to the portfolio. I hope that makes sense, but it's it's not easy for, you know, if you're not trading all day every day, it's a lot harder. But it's worth looking at some charts and just having a bit of a play, do it with a demo, you know, you just just do it after hours because even the half an hour charts or an hourly chart is not moving super fast. So you don't need to be sitting in front of the computer all day, but you could have, I mean, was it PET? This setup, you know, if you looked at this over the weekend, you go, oh, look, if it breaks through 53 today, I'm in, 53 and a half, I'm buying, I've got to stop at 49, you know, just below this high low. And then you're in today. And you come back and look at it tonight, oh, I've got in, fine. So it's just a, it's more work, obviously, but not, I wouldn't say a hell of a lot more. And there might be something that I wouldn't say much on the ASX setup because there's only, what do you got, about 10, 10 candles, 12 candles in a day on a half an hour chart, six or seven in a, um, on a daily chart. So it doesn't kick off that hard anyway. <laughs> no, Pete, it's not, mate, it's two because you're, I mean, it, it, I'm, it's a lot more advantageous for me because I just sit in front, I can see something, bang, 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 off you go. Um, so it's a fair bit easier. But um, it's all about learning and just seeing if, if you can make some money a different way. I mean, this, is, this sort of scenario is not going to happen all the time, don't forget. I mean, we're not, most of the time, markets spend in bull markets or they're a lot slower. And if we do have another pullback, I anticipate soon, it'll be good. Um, then that's going to clear out a lot, of, a lot of these buyers, start to reset, and I think it'll be a slow process of rebuilding, and that's where you don't have to sit in front of it all day. You can look at your daily charts. But we haven't retested the lows. We just V-shaped. I'm never a believer in a V-shaped recovery. I just don't think they – look, it could happen. And I think it's happened before. People say, oh, that was V-shaped, say, back when it dropped in 2018. That wasn't really a, a sell-off as such. It was just a big clean-out, and it didn't break any anchors. We have this stage at this time. Um, all right, so that's that's the S&P. If you just go to uh, Nasdaq, you know, saying we're not we're not breaking any any anchors here, we're not breaking anything to the downtrend. I'd say that's probably an anchor there. You've got a little inside level higher. The market's just powered higher. You are getting close to these all-time highs, which is very unusual. But they have been doing very well. Those stocks, the Nasdaq, the techs um, in the US, that's pretty much a full recovery. Now the Dow. And that's what, you know, NASDAQ too, a lot of these, what do you call them, not things, is it? You know, a lot of these stocks make up the big S&P, you know, whatever percentage um, of the big S&P. So that's why that's getting dragged higher as well. The Dow is, you know, I see it's a lot the same as the S&P. You've got this low here. The good thing to note on the S&P and the Dow especially, big sell-off, sharp sell-off, recovery, okay, the move up, if you see these moves up, they're getting, they're running out of steam. So if you just go and measure that, so that was a move up there. 
and then this move up here, we're just pulling back now. So if this doesn't continue, I would suspect that that could run out of steam just through the high. But you can see that the sort of the run up has been a lot shallower. The move up is, is seems to me like it's running out of steam, but there's nothing to say that that just can't spike right up and have one big week or or whatever. Nothing's proven itself. Just because it's running out of steam there does not mean that it's going to finish. Okay, you make sure you keep that in your head. If we break that anchor, so if we don't get up through these highs and the next stop is at least probably retesting this low, so we go up to, yeah, this is a slightly different. I'll just take that out. We get up to that high, then your anchor's about here. And if we turn around and break, then we retest fail and start to break down and test this low or even test this low, then to me that's getting more bearish and we can start look out on the lookout for some um, selling opportunities. The DAX, a bit the same, you know, it hasn't broken any anchor to the downside. It's, I was looking at this as a potential short. You know, well, it was probably more in here. I thought maybe this is going to be the high. We broke down and then we held because it, it didn't break the anchor. So that's where if I just went and said a breakdown, I'm selling, I'm diving in, and it didn't break an anchor, I'm just getting sucked into the market and set up, if that makes sense. So I was getting set up because this is where I've ruled my line. Who's to know that everyone's going to respect that line, that support, just because I drew it. Um, it broke down. I might have shorted in here going, that's it. It's on. But we haven't broken the anchor. And the anchor was really, um, let's just get, go to a four hourly chart. The anchor was down here at, say, 10, 240, and it didn't break. It tested it. It didn't break. I want to see that broke. I want to see that break. Sorry, not break. Break. And then get your lower high to work off, not just anticipate, because you anticipate you can get yourself caught out as well. And what happened? It pretty much retested and started to lift again. There's no reason why the Dow can't do that. So we've got a few key things we're to watch and respect the anchors, respect the highs, respect the price action. And if you can walk through from left to right and say, well, how would I feel? Um, if I was a buyer, how would I feel? If that level was broken, you know, say I bought it, I bought it on the rally here and it started to pull back, all right, and I, where am I going to have my stop? Pretty much I'm going to have my stop below there. And if it doesn't get tagged, then, okay, I've, I've lived through that and I just keep raising the stop. But you've got to ask yourself, if it's coming down here, how am I going to feel if I get tagged, if that goes through that level? Are you going to start to get nervous as a buyer, as a holder, especially if you bought it higher? If you bought it right down here, okay, you know that probably there's some pressure coming. If you bought it on those highs, you're going to be concerned that you're going to get smashed. So if you sit there and say, well, that's how I would be feeling if I was holding along, then it's not. it could be time to start looking at getting short. But if it doesn't break, if you started watching this and you got your stop below here and you say, look, if I bought it here or bought it anywhere in here, that's probably where I'd have my stop. So I'd be feeling a bit of pressure here, but I haven't been tagged in my stop. And again, I haven't been tagged. When it starts to lift, you go, okay, the pressure's gone now. So why would I think about shorting it up here? Okay, because it's bullish action. All of a sudden, it starts to roll over again. So you've got to start going through that same process. So if you can sort of sit there and say to yourself, how would I feel being long or short? If I was, if I was short, would I feel good about it? Would I feel bad? Um, to say whether you should get into the market. Or what, you know, if you could look at it and say, well, what would the buyers be thinking if they were long through here? Would they be stressed yet? No. Okay, why am I looking to sell? I'll just forget about it for now. Yes, they would be stressed. They would be getting stressed. What would cause the most pain? From here, the most pain for me, if I was a buyer, if I saw this action, if I just clear that up, so let me just clear that up. The most pain for me, if I was a buyer, is if I saw something like that and take out that level and something big, not just a, a little washout or level, but something that flushes through. And then, of course, you need these maybe a pullback. And then that's what I would expect. So if I was, if I was a buyer and I start to see it ramp through there, through that that low. I'd be concerned. I'd be really concerned. I'd probably have my stop below there anyway, or I'd have my stop about here. So if it takes those levels, then as a buyer, you've got to question whether you're right or wrong. So that's what I'd be looking at. So I was looking at that and go, if I start to get a lower high and I start to press down there, what's that going to trigger in a buyer's mind? So that's going to trigger a bit of pressure. So what do I want to do? Is that leg, leg up long enough for me to make some money if they get squeezed out? If we go down to test the low, is that long enough for two to one, one to one? Yes, it is. Okay, then I'm looking for a short. It's as simple as that. And then I, I just basically need an entry criteria. I need a setup. My setup could be riskier. I'll just draw that on the square. Box that up. 
risk entry below, risk above, done. And then away you go and you look at that and you've got, okay, if we get down, we you start holding this level, this inside level, on one to one. That's fine. If I get down further, I've got two to one, maybe three to one, two and a half to one. If we blast through that level, game on. It's it's going to keep pushing right down. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about and getting the mind of the buyer. So if you want to sell, are they going to feel stressed? Are they going to feel pressured? No, they don't even bother selling. Okay, yes. What, what's going to cause the most pain? This sort of thing. This is what I see causing the most pain for these buyers in here. And what would they do? More than likely, they're going to close the position. They're going to sell back into the market. So I want to be on the short side to take advantage of that squeeze. And it was probably the same. So if you're looking at this and you're going, should I go long here? Ah, sorry, should I go short here? No, not yet. Should I short here? No, because it hasn't really broken the anchor. You know, it didn't really break an anchor all the way up. All right, this is more of a contraction because your anchor's down here. Contracts lower, doesn't break the anchor. Up we go again. Contract sideways, we go again. Contract. So from here, I'll draw that. I wouldn't have been selling. All right. So the first opportunity was really the first pullback. You got blasted through here. So this is a clear signal. Look, there's going to be concerns. Not everyone gets out in that first wave down. There's going to be people holding, waiting for the potential bounce to see what happens on the bounce. It pops up to the MAs. So right in this zone. I could be looking at it as a contract there, say, okay, if we break those lows, box it up again, break through those lows, which is about there, I want to be short and my risk is above and see what happens because I know that there's a lot of people loaded to the hilt, um, loaded on the long side that need to get out sooner or later. And if that pressure's on, you can see why that expansion low, that was quite savage. That was your first minor bounce. If it happens again, you know, it's really going to open up a can of worms, which it did. And you can see that it just started plowing straight down. So that's the way my mindset works. I'm looking for to see who's going to get squeezed, what's going to happen. Um, is there enough fuel on the upside for a short if it does start to squeeze lower? Or has it contracted enough? Anyone that's sort of been shorting, is there enough people potentially on the sidelines that are going to want to jump in behind me to keep pushing that market up? So all these sorts of things just to try to get an, an idea of um, is it a good opportunity or not? Because obviously if you're trying to get into the unknown, into the areas of unknown, which is here, you know, oh, potentially here's here's a good little entry long. You know, we've had the market sell off here. That's caused a bit of issues with these buyers through here, sell off. High, low, just in here. Okay, for me, I'll box it up. Take the high, low, buy on the high, buy through the, the break. You know, you stop just below that high, low, and then up you go. Maybe you got stopped out here if you're too tight. Maybe you didn't. You've rode it all out. So again, we see that that little flush out was enough to probably put a lot of people on the sidelines. And if they got to reinvest, jump back in, probably can do that in that, that break up because it's off a high low. So that to me is like, oh, it's worth it. It's worth a shot. We get up to these highs, I've got a one to one, two to one trade. And if we, if I can hold it through that and we backed off here, and if I hold through that, then game on, we're into new highs. Okay. Does that make sense, everyone? Any questions that I guess a lot of you can see what I'm talking about. We've spoken about this quite a bit. It's not traditional because um, to me, markets move on emotions. Market moves um, for a number of reasons. If you're under pressure, you know, if you're, if you're long to the hilt, if you're long 1,000 shares, it's a lot different to be long 10,000 shares. It's going to be more pressure associated, associated with 10,000 shares um, of anything. You know, say it's a, a dollar, that's a grand as opposed to 10 grand. Say it's 10 bucks, it's 10 grand as opposed to 100 grand. Emotionally, two different things. You can't say I would... Everyone would say, if I had a 10 grand position, I'd act exactly the same as I had a 100 grand position to something with the same account size or earnings or whatever you got. You, you're always going to react differently. So that's why the markets are emotional to me. Um, not everyone's a robot, if that makes sense. We don't all just um, buy and sell the same way all the time. So it's easy to bump up how. And if we get statistics over the year that are saying we've got an edge of 60% right, 40% wrong, all right? And we're making an average, well, that's pretty much our stats, two to one, for instance. I go, all I have to do is double up on the size. I go, that's easy. You go, no, it's not that easy. If everyone's tried doing it, and I, I tend to get hit a lot, if I do bigger positions, I start to leverage up, it's hard. It's an emotional toll because all of a sudden your loss might go from a grand on one position to two grand. Now, that's... It's harder. It's harder to do. It's harder to walk through. You start to do dumb things. So that's why, to me, 
the markets, it has an emotional aspect and you see that in price action. And that's why we try to anticipate, along with the exponential move in averages, the stochastics, you know, to try and get onto momentum, to jump on board momentum. Um, I'm still looking at where the where would where would there be pain? Where would people be feeling pain if they're if they're long or short? Okay, obviously here, if that starts to bounce and then you get sellers stepping in, anyone that's long here that's holding, you know they're going to be under some pain, and then you know that they're probably looking. Oh, this is the sell off the market's been talking about. There could be some serious pain, so you wouldn't expect them to hold any longer. They've they've held through that, watching that bounce, and that's your first bounce. Didn't get anywhere near. They might have been looking off. It gets back to twelve. 13,000 back up here, I'm out. It doesn't get anywhere near that. Okay, so there's going to be some pain for some people if it keeps going down. So you know that, okay, that's worth a short opportunity. All right, any questions? I've got sidetracked, which is not unusual for me. Uh, but feel free to put in some charts and we'll we'll go over them. All right, so we'll just see um, anything else looks good. SX, SXY. If we're just talking about um, same sort of things, this is what we are talking about before. We go. I want to go to the weekly, but you can see that 10 cent mark. It's traded there, 2015 into 2016. It's traded around that 10,000, sorry, 10 cent level. Started to lift, got hammered at the end of 2018, and that was that sell-off we're talking about, August September, that first sell-off in the overall market, and then we went into new highs, obviously. Um, then it's found some pressure through 40. You know, tried that one, two, tested it, couldn't do it, high, low, suckered people in the long side. Once they bought on the break, potentially a 40, it's turned around and get smacked again. I think a lot of this move down is obviously um, on the back of what's happened in the last few months, in the back, big sell off. But the market was already under pressure on the weekly charts. SX Cenex Energy was under pressure anyway. Um, but what we're going to look at is this last sell off. What has that done to the mentality of anyone that's held through here? It's, it's just, it's hit them, okay? And if they're not out, they're never going to get out. You know, they're happy to ride this to zero, okay? So that sell-off there, to me, is important. If it wasn't a sell if we're looking at this price action here and we're looking at this structure somewhere here without a big sell-off, it hasn't put anyone under pressure, I probably wouldn't take it. I wouldn't go long. But the fact that we've had this big flush down after some negative um, – price action on the weekly, that has got to put a lot of people on the sidelines. And you can see the volume, bit of volume through here, you know, probably picked up again, bit of volume on the rally. Um, it has flushed out a lot of people. You know, so this move down, considering what the weekly's done, this weekly through pretty much from here, people try to buy it. Now, they're on the back of news, Twitter, um, I can't remember the other, the other place. You know, you, you sort of retail buyers love it and they forget what's happened previously. They're not putting into account anyone that's been holding longer term or um, is looking to buy longer term. They're not really taking into account that. So anyone that's bought through here on this rally has been under pressure for a while. And if you haven't sold that and you've had it for a few years, you can't tell me that hasn't put some pressure on your mental, your mental game. And you just go, that's it. It's all over. I'm out. I'm taking that loss. I'm locking it in. I'm calling it a day. But what it does is create opportunity. If this holds, this level through these lows hold, we've got the first leg up. We know that there's probably a lot of buyers on the sideline. Sideline's ready to go again. And if we get up through 22 and a half, say, it could be a move up to 30. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be looking at a big move. I'm not going to look to for the all-time rally and go straight up through 40. I don't think that's going to happen. But it's a short-term trade. The market, as long as the ASX is still looking okay. US Dow, all that's still looking okay. It's still going up. There's you could potentially buy on that break with a stop below. You're not risking a lot. Getting one to one might mean getting a 27. That's fine, and it's worth the risk. The selling pressure is coming in. You can see buyers down here on the lows, buying pressure all the way up. Okay, turning to selling pressure. Sellers piled in, pushing all the way down to the oversold. Price is holding through. It's soaking up. So buyers are soaking it up, which would suggest that next time they start to keep it a kick it's going to start to run again. We're going to get a leg like this, okay? So that's what I'll be looking for. So that was just an example of the reasoning behind, you know, there's a few key points if we're going to take the shorter term strategy of what we want to see. And essentially the biggest one is a flush out. If we haven't seen that flush or this initial bounce takes us all the way back to these highs and then we get this structure, I'm nowhere near it. I don't want anything to do with it.
I think there's better opportunities, uh, like I said, the PET. Um, now, hey, okay, let's have a look at that, Pete. I've got a cold coffee in front of me. Just let me mull this over while I have a drink. Now, that there, on mind the weekly, on the daily, that's pretty good. I like this. The, the biggest problem is what I see. Um, it's had a run. You know, it had a sharp run at the start of the start of 2000, then got pole axe, but it, it helped that it's got supported through, was that level 55? And that's on the weekly. That's a washout in the week. It finished below, straight up again and straight to hold. This is the second time around we've held a level at 70, a higher low after that flush. Now, I put a lot of emphasis in that flush, especially if it holds that high-low. Um, and you see, I'll look at that. Was that the one I just closed out previously? I don't want to look at it now. <laughs> it's going to annoy me if it's still going up. Um, yeah, if you look at you know, this price section, if we're looking at a few key points, and I have got my eye on this, actually, there's a lot, there's a lot of good things. That's sort of a key for me because that trend is still up. I would say that, you know, you, typically people, I guess, in, in shares don't have a hard stop as such. They go, if it finishes below there, I'm going to get out. I know a lot of guys, a lot of educators that say that. If it trades there and it finishes below, next week I'm out or next day I'm out. The fact that it didn't finish below there on that weekly chart, it's flushed out, back up. It's just taking, you know, it might take some CFD, people that have a hard stop in there. But I don't mind the fact that it's flushed and finished above and then it started to lift off that level. That, to me, is a buying area where people want to buy it. And it's off the, I think it's a 200 MA, EMA, bouncing off that 200, tested that level. Again, it's been under that under the pressure of that major sell-off. The overall market was melting down there. So you do expect, you know, you don't expect the, the higher levels to hold. You sort of expect it to gun for something a bit lower. It just creates more pain for people, you know, on a deeper correction. So what it's done from here, so you've got one, two, held that, and this is on the weekly, that's your high low. It's not confirmed until we start to get, you know, we get through 95. So there is a chance that it's got a lot of work to do. So that's pretty much how I'll be structuring that on the weekly. If you're looking at purely the weekly and you bought it, you know, traditionally I want to see a buy through 95 with my stop at 65, but I wouldn't do that because it's far too big a stop. Okay, so that's why I'll be dropping it down to the daily. But you can see that that action there, we potentially haven't finished holding lower highs. This could turn into a lower high and go straight back down to test 55 again. Okay, nothing there is confirmed. If we start to lift and trade 85, okay, that's a good heads up. Maybe because it's starting to come out of contraction, we're going to keep lifting. And this is what is going to support the market 70 at 70 cents. Okay, so, and that's all based off high lows are still holding on the weekly. All right, so if we go into the daily now, Oh, if I can get a bit of closer look, that's it's looking good. So there's, you know, you could take it through the break there at 77 and a half, say. You could have your, a tight stop. You might have to stop just below 70, below this low. You might have it at 70, below this low. Because of what I was just talking about, the weekly, because the weekly could easily stop here and roll over again and do another lower high like this. And it's your high, lower high, another lower high. All right. So anyone that's bought it into this rally, if they're not out, there could still be some buyers that are holding because they've got the stops below there, but and that could be what the pressure is going to come. So what I was saying before about um, the one thing I didn't like it is the fact that it's spiked up so hard, spiked up hard here, spiked up hard here. Yeah, another good run up here, um, which failed. Um, that to me, it drags in a lot of emotions, it drags in a lot of buyers, um, and they're getting emotional because it doesn't kick on here. So you bought it late, you did it again, it's just not kicking on. You bought it late, you saw that couple of days, then you go, I'm looking at Twitter, everyone says it's a buy, so I'll buy it here and it rolls over. You know, it's taken a lot of mo emotional energy um, trading that. So that's why, I mean, it could potentially get here and if it starts to stall on your lower time frame daily, then there could be a lot of longer term traders go, oh, that's it, I'm getting out, it hasn't kicked on. I, I sat through, you know, I bought it in here, I've sat through that pullback, it rallied up, I didn't take it, it's come all the way back down, I'm back into negative territory, I'm back positive. Now I'm probably sitting about break even, if I go negative again, I've had enough. I'm, I'm closing it. So that's what you got to, you know, if you sort of tell yourself a story, I guess, 
well, that's what I do. I might, I like to talk to myself a lot though. Um, tell myself a story of what could be happening if you were by at different stages, then you're feeling pressure. Now, when would you be happy? Probably with a push, if it gets to 85 from here, another four or five cents, I'd probably be pretty happy because that opens up to the door to what I was just saying, that, that push up. And you see it a bit clearer on the daily chart. And don't forget there's been a, quite a bit of volume. You just draw that up from the highs we go across, a push up to 85, or even you know, 85, 86, 87, leads me to believe that's, that's confirmed high low. Um, I don't need to wait for that break of you know, this level or break of that level to be you know happy, or sorry, a break of 92 mainly. Let's just take a step back. Break that 92 to buy because I'm, I reckon they don't re normally get, that's contraction. You don't normally break out of contraction without at least pushing a high low or just kicking on. Um, you don't generally break out of contraction, come down and take out this, you know, the high low in here. You don't nearly go up and whip down, straight down. If you do, if that's if you bought it, for instance, you're buying it here and you did get lucky enough to get that break up to 85, 86, 87, you know, your stops below there. If you get tagged on your stops, there's a good chance that the overall market has um, has been smacked. Emotional capital, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> I flounder with my words. All right, so does that make sense? What I'm talking about. So it is an emotional game, and you've got to look for where the pain could be created. If you're short in here, it's the same. You're looking good. You're expecting that to roll over, and if it starts to get to 87 and you're short, it's just the reverse of what we talked about. Um, people are going to start to get, oh, okay, that could be a squeeze, and, I'll, and my stop's obviously going to be above around 95, say, up here um, from a short. Because you're on the wrong side. You, you're starting to believe that you're going to be on the wrong side of the market because you'd be thinking the exact same thing. If I was short here and it starts to break up, I reckon this is going to hold and it's going to lead to a high level. And if you want to know where, potentially that's your leg up, we extrapolate that out. It could be going back up to these highs, you know, equal and opposite. Sorry, not equal and opposite, but equal volatility projection or just projecting that leg up. First leg up, pull back, secondary leg up, it could be taken in 115. So if you're short in here, you've got to have that going through your mind and you've got to, you know, if you're not, especially if you're a short seller, you're going to know where your risk is. Um, you're going to, you're going to make sure that you've got your risk um, levels all set up and you, I mean, if you've got your stop up here, you probably really, if you don't tighten it up, once you start to get that breakdown, then, you know, you probably get tagged on it. So that's what would be going through my mind if I was short in here on that breakdown through whatever it was, 85. Um, and this is actually what exactly what happened to us on gold. If I get back to the, the gold chart, uh, anyone that we've been we've been long took a good run up on gold. Here we go. We go back to I was on the hourly chart. Okay, so we got a, a good run up here. I don't know how much we got, and then we had a I think I had a long in here got stopped out. So I was looking at this price action right up until about this date. It was about here. Okay, so if we look at that, I was looking short. I'm thinking top, you know, if you've got this rally up here, big pullback, okay, that's your double top. We've gone down, okay, this has looked to me like it's going to be a lower high. We got short, and lo and behold, it's went straight back up. And I'm watching this here. We got back into the market. We got we were on side there, meaning we were positive. And then I started getting this side of price action going, well, why is it going back up? If I'm positive, and I, I think it's going to go up. Why is it starting to head back up? So instead of having my stop, I was happy to tighten my stop right up. And eventually I think we tightened it up to about somewhere around here, somewhere around here, as opposed to letting it get all the way back up here. Um, what was that? 17.15, I think it was. I tightened it up because I thought, well, if I'm, if I'm going to be wrong, I want to at least minimise my risk and be wrong as small. So if I get stopped out on small a size as I can or – the minimum loss as I can because what I was thinking is just not playing out. That to me, that action, especially in here, was showing me it's just not going to happen, especially if we failed. That, this to me was the key. See that low there? The way it rejected and went straight back up through the highs? That um, that led me to believe, no, I don't believe that. We should hold this lower high, lower high, lower high, press down, back on side. That was a stop entry just through here. Back on side, it didn't go through this low. That's not a good sign. I want to tighten up because I, I still want to give it some room because I could be right. It could pop up and go straight down. It could wash out that level and go boom, like it's done here. If you can see that, you know, it took out this high, washed them out, 
and then boom, straight like that. So I had that in mind as well. It just didn't happen to keep going up. I'd rather be stopped out reassessing um, than holding a short position with a big loss. All right, so that was the gold trade. Um, has anyone got anything else? Oh, it's NEC, sorry about that. So all in all, I, I, don't, I like this structure on ALK, but there's nothing to say that this is a dragon if you buy it. It's starting to run out of steam. If you look away at buying pressure and selling pressure, as we get up here, if the if the volume's coming down, as we start approaching this high, you know, 84, it could be a problem. But either way, I don't mind that overall structure. It's worth a, it's worth a stab. If you get stopped out, it doesn't mean you've done a wrong trade. It just means it didn't work out. It's <laughs> pretty simple. Um, NEC. Is that everything? So NEC, I don't remember where we're long from. That's through here. No, it wasn't. We've been long that for a while. That was very aggressive. Do you remember where we got long from? I'm pretty sure we closed out. I'll find out on the stats here somewhere. Um, so we're out of that now. And NEC, NEC. Should make sure I got it right before I talk to you about it. Okay, for a long at 125, partial at 138, and then out at 140. Where are we now? 144. Yep, I'm kicking myself. So that looks like it's going to go again. And if you if you don't know, you can put your stop below, you know, around 135, hold it, 136, and then just see if you can push up. If you can finish above, you know, around where we are, 145, 46, great. If not, then there's a good chance it's going to roll over. So this here, you know, big sell off is what we mentioned just before. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it kills me. I, I could do some dumb things. I'll, I'll, I'll give myself credit. 28th of the 4th entry. Thanks, Pete. So it was 125. So it was somewhere here. Is about right? This one. So this candle here, through that high, we know our risk is below, and it kept going, took a partial, pulled back, and then for whatever reason, I was just happy to close it Friday. I think it's been it spent so much time just chopping around here. And at that stage, I didn't want to see over the week, you know, a big sell-off on Friday night, and then um, expect that this is going to gap down and, and close us out. I was happy we got it. We had a couple of positions on. Um, I'm happy to book that game because it was going nowhere and it was sitting above the MA. So if I was right about the overall market, this sort of grind up is going to get some selling soon. So my concerns with this is that, um, let's just do that. Let's do a few things. Is that we're going to start to find some pressure up here because the more extended you get, that's one, that's your second leg up. The more extended you get on the upside, the more it's dragging people off the sidelines into the market, all right? So it's not an infinite amount of people who are going to buy NEC. There's a finite amount of people, meaning that, you know, say you've got 100 buyers are willing to buy that. Everyone else is buying something else. You might use up 30. You've used up another 30 or 40. That doesn't mean leave too many people on the sidelines that are willing to jump in to keep pressuring it higher. So the higher it goes, the more unlikely for me it's going to pull back. Uh, sorry, it's going to keep going more likely anyone that's been buying is going to start to lock away some gains like us. It's just when and where. So I'm, I'm essentially happy in this environment to start booking those good gains when you get them. That was still 10, 15%, I think, on that. It's probably better now, but, you know, we, we could be doing the same thing we just did with APT. APT, we've had another stab at it. Um, a, sorry, APE, we've had a second stab at it, doing great. It could be... On NEC, we could potentially, I mean, if you're going to buy now, it makes sense you can buy through that high at 145. You, you could could have bought it and your stop is just below that low at 134. So say 130, you got a 15 cent stop. Uh, you know where your risk is and if you're wrong and it does um, get smacked out, then so be it. But for me too, that volume is decreasing as we're going up. So it doesn't, I don't like it as much. I mean, it might pick up the next couple of days. And I don't like that because I like to buy in that first. So what I'm essentially looking for at this stage is, like I said, um, a big sell-off here. First, that's your first heads up. Okay, we're going to react up. 
All right. And then what I'm looking for is that I'm always looking for that second leg up. So this is what I'm looking for, that secondary leg up. And I want to try to time that secondary leg up. Okay. Because most things, when it's, you know, if we go down a big sell off here, you can always sort of suspect there's going to be a secondary leg down. All right. Or the same on the upside. You know, so we, we've got good resistance here. We break that, but not just wash through it, but break through it quite clearly and pull back. You're sort of looking for that secondary. I'm always looking for that secondary move to buy into and expansion. And then that's where there's sort of the euphoria might kick in and we start to rally higher. That's what I'm essentially looking for. And that was about here on that entry at 125. All right. So if we drop that down, let's just drop down to an intraday chart to see what's showing there. Yeah, so the intraday is actually looking good. That's consolidation at the highs. We just ticked off today, which ticks me off, but that's the way it is. Too bad. Okay. So yeah, that's um I think it's getting a bit extended here. You know, it's gonna there's gonna be some sellers coming in. The the longer it doesn't, if it doesn't kick on here, we don't clearly finish up today at say 14678. I'll still be concerned that that's not going to kick on for me. But anyway, that's NEC um MNY. Let's look at that then. That's gone. That's you would want to have got in earlier today through 152 and a half, say, if we're looking at the um the intraday. So if we build that up from a daily chart, uh that's your daily. Okay, so the daily, everyone should be able to see what I'm talking about. This is your, you can say that's your leg up, bit of contraction there, and we're looking for a secondary leg up. This is what I'll be looking at on the daily. Um, this is minor leg through here. You're looking at that potentially holding, because you know where your risk is going to be. We've got a little flag, whatever you want to call it. This is your high low. These are still holding. That's your trend up. So how to actually... Coming in today was probably, if I didn't notice it, I don't know why I didn't notice that. So one million, yeah, look, could have been something we got onto. Um, coming into that today, before this candle formed, that was a, you know where you, you should be entering because it's quite clear from that daily, if it breaks up, you know, we're going to start to get, potentially get another leg up, all right? But instead, normally on a daily, I might be waiting for a breakthrough 160, all right, with my stop down at, 135 so that's how i'd box it up from a daily but if we just break that down to so 160 i'll be up six cents now it's still good but if we can break that down on a get a bit of a, a run up on it same sort of thing you've got markets pushed up here so remember what the day that's 160 it's backed off from 160 one two legs down that's the two legs we just spoke about a second ago you know if you were looking to buy buy on a pullback look for your second pullback Tends to flush people out if it gets retested and holds is a good sign. So we held right through here, right up until Friday. Lower highs are coming into play. So what's going to happen? Anyone that's selling through there or anyone that's waiting, where are they most likely to start to dive in? Potentially on that break up through 152, even if we want to give a bit more room, 155. But either way, that was front running the break of 160. I mean, maybe 160 would not have broken. It's a bit more aggressive, that, that entry. But you're looking that that has broken out. Uh, chart's not coming up. Are you seeing the chart now? So I'm just talking someone through trading view there, guys. Is that coming up, guys? Is the chart's coming up okay? I think it should be coming through. Oh, yep. There you go. So that's that's what I'm looking for. All right, that's you know that's your break. If you just draw that up now, and remember we're we're still taking into account what's happened in the daily. We're looking for that 160, and as soon as we expect that it's going to get through, you know 160, it's a good breakout. It's probably broken out earlier than that, but that's the high, and that's that confirms our our high low. So that's our high low both in the daily and intraday, and this is basically what we're looking for. Okay, break up here, you can front run any of these sort of levels through here. You can front run the break of 60. Effort. Like I said, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You know where your risk is going to be. You can tighten up your risk too, or you can just keep it a bit wider like the daily charts. All right, does that make sense? Oh, can you see the DAX chart? It seems to be coming through on my end, so I'm not sure. 
that's the that's the goal we were talking about. DAX chart. It looks like it's coming through from here, so I'm not sure what chart's that. Yeah, that's the chart we just spoke about. So I'm just looking at the stream coming through now through trading view. So yeah, I'm not sure if it could be something on your end. Check it out, just refresh it. So I'll, you can check out the recording anyway to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's come through the recording fine. Um, so that's good now. Okay. All right. So that's probably all you know. Time to talk to talk about today. Um, like I said, if you've got any questions at all, feel free to send us an email to support at tradesetup.com.au. Um, hopefully, we can give you you know continue to give you some um, good tips and tricks for trading and what we look for. Um, and if you're not consistency, hopefully it does help you get consistent. Um, like I said, we don't, we're not your traditional, well, I guess it's off price action. The way I'm trading is off price action. And most professional traders will be trading off price action where you expect people to get caught. Um, there is, a, if you come from an investing background into shares, I guess you have a different perspective. Um, but either way, I, I think, you know, whatever works for you really, if we can help out in any way, just let us know. Um, yeah, send us an email at support at and I'll get back to you. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. We'll be back in um, next Monday, and I'll see if I can push out another stream, so Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. We'll see how we go. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can continue on up. I'll speak to you again soon.